Today, Heavy has the privilege of catching up with Ina Selvik from the band Wadruna about their latest release, Gewiltraven, Flight of the White Raven. We start by asking him how the initial response to the album has been, which was released just a week or two ago. The response has been wonderful. Um, of course, uh, the Kvitraven part of the album is is something that people have a lot of people are familiar with uh, because it was released in 2021 uh, in this reissue format uh, the, together with the live part the live part is uh, has has received great response and um, yeah people seem to um, uh, yeah it, it seemed to be uh, you know for for many years uh, people have asked us to to have this kind of a, a, a live recording of our songs. Uh, so, um, it, in many ways, it was due to popular demand that we we actually decided to do this. Uh, so, uh, yeah, very happy so far. Oh. And the, the actual live part of it was filmed and recorded without an actual audience, mate. So, did you find it difficult playing the songs without an, a crowd to engage with? Not really. Um, it's, I think. The way I see it, whether or not it's um, yeah performing, that's a, that's about becoming one with uh, with your environment. Of course, connecting with the people in the room, whether or not there are three people in the room or or uh, three thousand people in the room, uh, you you sort of have to uh, become one with the music and and uh, uh, so so I w- was able to to tap into those things and of course also uh, you know we we hadn't been together in the same room for for over a year at that point Uh, so i i think that friction and excitement uh was also part of that equation and and uh, yeah there was a lot of energy there still i have to say yeah And you mentioned that it was the first time that the whole band had stood together in the same room for over 12 months. So did it take long for that onstage chemistry to come back to the performance? No, it felt like, it felt like yesterday and, uh, and, and uh, yeah, everyone had, was really prepared, uh, was really excited. Uh, So no, it, 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 it honestly felt like it would, it was only like a few days since since we had been on stage together. Uh, so the chemistry was was there, and then some. Yeah, and your music as a whole, mate, like, it's highly atmospheric and hypnotic in places. So how difficult is that to recreate in a live environment? Well, you ne- you never know how how a song is gonna perform, how how it will work when in front of an audience. Uh, so that that is always excited when you when you try out new songs. Uh, and um, but um, and and of course back in two thousand and nine when we did our very first concert, um, I I wasn't sure how it would work, um, but <laughs> but but yeah that, that first experience saw that how how, how powerful um, this type of music has the potential of being, uh, especially when done in in. Uh, yeah, settings or environment that some that complement uh, complement the music, uh, so you get a synergy effect. Um, so, I uh, no, I, I I think I think this kind of music uh, works really well in into um, in, in a live setting. Um, people 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 seem to to connect to it uh, very strongly. And how about in the studio? Have you, have you got any like any special tricks or like personal things you do to to create that atmosphere in the studio? Well, it, it comes down to be, I do a lot of method recording, you could call it, uh, and and that's about becoming, you know, the the creative concept of Quadruna is is that we try to interpret the. Um, um, we try to interpret uh, the themes we're working with as close as possible on their own premises. That means that it is the themes that decide and define uh, the instrumental needs, uh, where I record, when I record, what state I'm in when I record, specific dates that have relevance, 
specific places that have relevance and so on. So in, in some ways you can say it's the, it's the songs that, or the themes that is the instrument. Uh, no, the, the composer and I am just the instrument. So there are, uh, yeah, there are many, uh, many things uh, we do uh, and strange recording uh, situations and, and uh, yeah. How many cool. stories. <laughs> <laughs> and your latest film clip for Helwegen also features English subtitles. So was it an easy translation from the native language into English or was it sort of hard to get some phrasings right? Of course, it's it's hard, especially when you, you know, sometimes I, I work with uh, old poetic structures uh, and they, they have uh, very specific rules when to alliterate, when to rhyme and, and and how many syllables and so on. Uh, so sometimes it, I can't always be as strict uh, in in the in the translations. And and of course, certain words are diff difficult to translate. Um, um, but at the same time, I, I've this is something we've done all along because I do. Even though our music is pretty instrumental. You know, you can, you can enjoy it without understanding the lyrics because they are, the vocals are pretty instrumental. Um, at the same time, uh, the poetry is, uh, is definitely a big part of, of the music and, and uh, allows you to, to, yeah, especially if you want to go deeper into to what the songs are about and what these traditions are about. So we always try to, to work out nice translations um, first and foremost in, to to english but but also in, in uh, we're working on different languages as well so so people can um yeah go more into the depth of, of the po poetry as well and well Druna's music is deeply based in norse traditions of course so how much time actually goes into research for historical accuracy shitloads <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, I always say that Wodruna, it's, it's not about trying to recreate music from any specific time period or, or necessarily doing like authentic music, but at the same time, it's, it's important for me to not climb into trees that doesn't have roots, you know, so I always approach these themes, whether it's the musicology of it uh, or, or the themes themselves uh, in an a academic way. So I, I do thorough research. Um, so, so I stand on solid ground before I start venturing into to the more creative, um, creative processes. Uh, so it, it, that's a, it's a very important uh, key ingredient, I, I would say. Yeah. And Scandinavian folk music has become one of the biggest subgenres in heavy music over recent years. What do you actually put that down to? Well, uh, I, you know, uh, all culture, all traditions are, are, are results of its environment. Up here, it's pretty, it's pretty dark. It's pretty, <laughs> the, the nature is very grim in a way. Uh, at the same time, it's be very beautiful, you know, so, and, and that reflects our traditions also, and that also, of course, includes music. And so I think Scandinavian um, folk music have, there is a lot of uh, melancholy uh, in it. It's, it's a lot, it can be pretty dark. Uh, and so, so quite aesthetically, I think if you're into heavy music and, and um, melancholic music, dark music, it, that potential is definitely there uh, in, in that tradition, the, um, at least parts of it. Uh, and of course, you know, like Norway, uh, Norwegian and Scandinavian, especially I would say Norwegian metal, black metal, have drawn a lot of, um, a lot of inspiration from, from traditional tonality. Uh, as well in in the music, so it's it's something that that uh, metal audience has has been exposed to, yet in a different form for a long time. I would say. And then, where do you see Wadruna's role in actually taking this audience, taking the music to a wider audience? 
I, I definitely think we, we played a big part in, you know, I wouldn't call our music folk music or traditional music because we, 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 it's sort of taking parts of folk music, parts of something that is older than the traditional music we know uh, and creating something new with it. Um, and in that, we kind of created almost our, our own genre in, in a way. And of course, uh, that that um, uh, inspired other artists and and we got inspired by by artists who who played around with these things in the first place as well at some point and then took it a step further uh, so um yeah I, I guess Woduna played played quite a big part in yeah giving voice to to a lot of these old instruments um and, and traditions um definitely i think you're being quite modest there mate you guys have played a massive role in it not just a little role <laughs> <laughs> well thank you <laughs> worries, mate. all right well thanks very much for your time tonight i'm gonna have a crack at saying this but the wilson first flight of the white raven is out now with a two disc edition with the live special concert as well so get out and grab yourselves a copy mate and thanks for your time pleasure is mine sir <laughs>